Hello, I'm Mike Avett from Atlanta Technical College. Uh, in this video today, we're going to go over um, how to upload a video to YouTube. Um, and the reason for this is I just finished creating a uh, video for uh, Nearpod, how to upload lessons and stuff here. Um, one of the problems with Nearpod, uh, or not really a problem, uh, one of the things about Nearpod is you can only upload 100 megabyte uh, videos to it um, and any lecture or lesson that you're going to do online that's over like a minute and a half I think uh, will go over the requirement for 100 megabytes so the solution to that uh, and for uh, longer lessons and that kind of thing maybe you don't even want to use Nearpod um, is to upload videos to YouTube. So um, I'll make a quick video here talking about uh, how to do this. Um, as you can see, I'm using uh, the computer's camera app, uh, and I just simply clicked on uh, camera down here um, where it says camera. Uh, I clicked on that and it brought up this screen and I'm able to record video or, or pictures either or here um, with a external camera so this is this is the way I like to do it um, you can also do it uh, using collaborate and I'll make a video on that uh, at a later time so um, just using an external camera here we're recording a session uh, it's set up to record on the camera here and it will automatically uh, upload this file or save it uh, into your camera roll um, on uh, the computer on the hard drive okay so let's say you wanted to do a lesson uh, and I'm just going to pull up uh, my JBL here because this is the system uh, we're currently using at Atlanta Technical College um, so I pull up my, my JBL, go to the, the class I want, and say I wanted to make a video on um, lesson one, one of the, one of the first uh, lessons we talk about here. Uh, so I can go to chapter one, EMS systems for the EMT, uh, and I can pull up their learning objectives and talk about how uh, the learning objectives are important for their their core understanding of this course uh, and for testing purposes and what's being covered in the book and that kind of thing. I usually mention to the students that uh, most of the test questions and that kind of thing come from uh, these knowledge objectives uh, both here at the school, uh, EMS testing, and uh, National Registry. So here I can explain to them, you know, uh, where to find the knowledge objectives uh, in the front of every chapter or the first thing that pulls up on their uh, electronic learning system here um, and they make it real nice for you here at JBL they they give you the knowledge objective and give you the page number where it's found and all that good stuff okay uh, say after that I wanted to go in and talk a little bit about the lesson uh, or just give the uh, the lecture on uh, EMS systems. Um, JBL has an interactive lecture uh, that the students could just look at and go over, um, or we can go to their the slide presentation. Um, I I use both. I let them use the interactive lecture um, for just refreshing their memory. Um, but initially, I go over the slideshow with them uh, so I can make sure they understand uh, the key points and I can uh, iterate the things that I want them to make sure they understand. So you can come through here and uh, walk through uh, the EMS uh, systems, the history of EMS and stuff, uh, roll through your slides. Um, this is nice if you do this on two different screens. Um, on the other side here, it will pull up the, uh, the lecture outline as you go through it and stuff so that you can see both um, and your students see this. 
Okay, uh, we roll through EMS systems, course description, the differences between EMR, EMT, and AEMT and paramedic, um, some of the things that are expected of them, licensing requirements, uh, the overview of EMS systems, the history, because um, they always seem to forget about the, the white paper and that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, when I give a lecture, we reiterate that, and that kind of deal. We talk about the, the levels of training, uh, the scope of practice model, medical direction, uh, as you'll see coming up here. Um, human resources, there's medical direction, uh, legislation, the new part uh, where they've added in mobile integrated healthcare now. Um, talks about it, uh, information systems, quality, uh, continuous quality improvement, uh, do no harm, um, education, research, roles and responsibilities of the EMT, professional attributes, and then it gets into the review. And you can, like I said, do this on the video. Uh, you can go through the question. Uh, give it a pause, let them think about it, and then roll through the answers and why. Okay, and you can do that for your whole PowerPoint uh, for every chapter here. It's all set up nice and easy. Okay, um, and then we can go back in here, and as I've ended the show, you'll see over here, uh, I could stop the video, um, and like I said, that will show up. Uh, at the bottom of your screen down here, okay? Um, and it also shows up as you look into your, your folder. Um, I'll show you one. Uh, look at my pictures and camera roll here. Uh, one I did a minute ago. Uh, I actually stopped the video at this point. And I didn't mean to. Um, this is the last one that I had done. Um, talking about the same thing. Okay, I'm like a bit but it stopped the video uh, before I finished talking about everything that I needed to because I was talking about uploading the video. Okay, so it shows up here under your under your camera roll. Okay, and it's pretty simple. Um, if I go back over here and exit out of this and pull up my uh, YouTube account, um, so I'm sitting here with uh, my YouTube, and these are videos that I had uploaded, and uh, it had been a little while since I had done this, so um, I had to go back and, and find my password and stuff, but uh, like I said, I just uploaded this uh, video of Nearpod, um, and then I'm going to upload this video, um, but to show you how easy it is, um, because we're talking about uploading the video, okay, I'm going to go back to my camera roll here and upload the uh, one that wasn't finished okay so that's the one that isn't finished and I go back over this side and in the top right hand corner I I can hit create and upload my video and it's as simple as going back over here grabbing this video and moving it over here and dragging and dropping it okay so it drags it and drops it in there uh, and then you just go through the process of naming it uh, I'm gonna name this one uh, tester um, because I'm gonna delete it and upload this other one uh, as soon as I finish um, and you upload your description here uh, whatever that is uh, upload thumbnails again we have a problem with thumbnails you have to make sure you select a uh, a thumbnail or a picture that is uh, pretty small I think it's under uh, uh, 20 megabytes or something like that um, so thumbnails are kinda hard to add in there um, but you have to just select a, a picture that you want to add in there. Um, you can put it on playlist, whatever that is. Um, audience. Um, 
you have to do this, uh, whether it's made for kids or not made for kids. Um, and it just depends on what you're going to be talking about, that kind of thing. I'm going to say, no, it's not made for kids. Um, age restriction. Um, do you want to restrict it to people that are over 18 or not? That kind of thing. Okay. Um, so I just always choose, uh, unless I was talking about gynecology or something like that, uh, not to restrict it uh, for folks. Okay. Um, once you've got that in there, uh, you'll see in the top right hand part of your screen, it's talking about processing the video. So it's doing that, uh, as you're doing this, uh, you can add an end screen, a picture, that kind of stuff, uh, cards in the video, um, different elements. I usually don't play with that. I just, uh, do a live talk and move it over. And if I mess up, I just start all over again. Um, so I finished doing that. You hit next. It goes through uh, checking the uh, uh, version to make sure there's no weird content or whatever in there. Um, and once it's finished doing that, it lets you move on. And I hit save or publish. I always make it public on this channel. Um, you can make it private and have the students subscribe to your channel or whatever you want to do there and then you just go down here and hit the publish button okay uh, once you do that and finish the processing and stuff uh, then that video uh, will be uploaded to your account much like this one uh, and uh, able to be viewed okay um, and I'm going to delete this one that we just did. And then I'll go back and add this video into here. Anyway, so that's uh, that's it. Uh, make sure you remember your, your channel name and that kind of thing so you can give it to your students. Um, and uh, they can go on and view it as long as you got it set as public content. Like I said, if you don't have it set as public content, um, then... Uh, you'll need to give them access or whatever. And then the last thing is, uh, when you do a video up to uh, YouTube here, they can either view it that way, um, or again, we can uh, upload it to Nearpod like in the last video. Um, and any videos that you create and stuff uh, for Nearpod have to come, well, it, it's they pretty much have to come through YouTube um, and use the link um, because the video storage is limited to 100 megabytes on Nearpod. So that's about the size of it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me at mavet at atlantatech.edu. That's M-A-V-E-T-T -T at atlantatech.edu. Have a great day.